Good morning. Grab that coffee and settle in. It's time for the Gunsmith Show with John and Jake Smith, brought to you by Williams Gunsight. All right, we are back. You know, it's Memorial Day weekend, and uh, Memorial Day weekend's always special. I mean, it's that time where patriotism's coming out, you're getting your summer started, you're starting your planting, but let me, I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick about Memorial Day. Memorial Day originally called Decoration Day as a day of remembrance for those who have died for our nation's service and in our nation's service. Memorial Day was officially proclaimed on May 5th, 1868 by General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic. He was first observed, and it was first observed on May 30th, 1868, when flowers were placed on the graves of the Union and Confederate soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. So, that's the origins of why we have Memorial Day. So don't forget that, folks. Remember that. Uh, get out, uh, pay tribute to those who have, have uh, laid down their lives to, to get us where we're at in this world. And remember that on voting day as well. Very, very important. This is the Gunsmith Show. I'm John. And I'm Jake. And we're here to talk about American weaponry. There's and nothing really more American than something that... Just, it's the American way to take something that was there and make it better. Yeah. And, and that's the story of this 458 SOCOM, how it all originated in the, in the year 2000. Uh, well, I could have fun with that one. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways. All right. Uh, what happened was there was all these reports you know, in, in the 90s. We had all the stuff going on in Mogadishu. It was called Operation yep. Gothic Serpent. All these soldiers coming back saying, guys, the 223, it's not taking down the enemy. Right. We've got all these guys who are unloading magazines into the enemy, and they are not stopping. That's uh, began the whole change in a lot of things. Yes. We had Liberty Ammo on a couple weeks ago discussing that, needing a better stopping power ammunition. And, uh, well, I guess it was probably a month ago. They a month, on, but a month it, and a half ago but now. It was, but it was still fresh in my mind. But, you know, so they came back, and a whole bunch of different companies. Last week, you know, the 450 Bushmaster. This week... We're talking about the 458 SOCOM, and the company was called Tepo Jutsu in Oklahoma. Okay. They instantly started working on this project because they wanted something with more knockdown power for our troops. Right. They wanted to give our troops that superior firepower so that they will always win. But we're, what we're talking about, a uh, shoulder-fired weapon in still in the AR-15 class. Correct. And that same lightweight, because AR-15s are light, M16s are a lightweight weapon. They are. They are not heavy at all. They're easy to handle, easy to move, easy to work on, easy to disassemble and clean. They're fairly simple. And that platform has been popular for a long time for a reason. Well, so, br- introducing these large bores to this is, is a natural fit. For inspiration for the for the round, they actually went all the way back to the Vietnam War era, and they found <laughs> this is really interesting. They found a cartridge that was called the 458 by one and a half Barnes. This is this blew my mind because I had no idea about this. This I was, never heard this. This was a completely working on this. One of those special forces deals that are kind of uncovered, and you know, through Freedom of Information Act, you find these little things. It was a complete, it was a 458 caliber round. So it's a 45 caliber round. Yep. Made the fiery 500 grain bullet at subsonic speeds through a suppressed bolt action rifle. Holy cow. That's, uh, that's somewhat scary. That's quite, yeah. that's quite a round. So that's where the origins of this that's, round that's, came from. That's kind of where this came from. All right. Uh, and that was the idea that they wanted to, to focus their new one on. And basically what they did was they kind of rebuilt it. They took a lengthened 50 AE case. So your, your 50 Action Express, which is what your Desert Eagles fire. They yes. took that 50 caliber brass and they lengthened it, necked it down a, a hair, literally just a hair, and made it a 458 caliber round. Uh, the whole, the case length now was 1.575 inches long. Okay. And with the bullet, it still would allow the cartridge to fire out of a standard AR-15 magazine. So instead of being a 30-round <laughs> AR magazine, <laughs> yeah, it, okay, it would usually hold 30 rounds of 5.56, 223. Correct. It now only holds nine 458 SOCOMs. Yeah, but. But 
okay, there's a it's, big, a it's a different it's a different it's not a spray and pray round like the five five six has been right called. Uh, it, I think the five five six is a very effective round when properly used, but uh, I'm, uh, you know. I don't want to get into detail on that, but <laughs> but my point is, when effectively used, it's a good round. But with having only nine rounds in the gun and knowing how powerful it is, you're going to make sure that it's a one-shot-per-use gun. And this certainly would almost, I would say, ensure that uh, you get your terminal ballistics and everything everything right on the button yep. to take care of your target. So, very interesting. The... Uh Sticking with the AR, the 223 size, though, the total length of the cartridge overall is basically the same as a 5.56. It's it's 2.26 inches long. Right. Uh, so it's still in that size of an of a 5.56 round. And instead of the 500 grain bullet, yeah, that's kind of that. Well, the subsonic. There's something to be said for subsonic, but you only have you you you, you know you can basically watch the bullet fly, well, and you're going to be your range is going to be greatly. That's why it was it was silenced rifles only. It was it was made for a specific use. Uh, and through it all, the interesting thing is this gun can be used if you hand load it. Anything from a 100 grain bullet all the way up to a 600 grain bullet. No kidding. That's pretty amazing. The but in the tests in in the factory test preferred for this round to be the ultimate you know the perfect of both worlds they picked a 300 grain spitzer si- style bullet f- through barnes okay a barnes is a is, is the is bullet manufacturer that has always been very proprietary they're usually solid or all copper, all copper or lead turn. free right uh so there's a 300 grain bullet now in 2009 barnes introduced a bullet just for the 458 socom all right it's somewhat like last week in the 458, in the 450 Bushmasters, yeah, with the, the bullets, the green tips, and just for that round. Well, Barnes has done it for the 458. It's called the Tipped Triple Shock X. Huh. The it's a 300. X. It's a 300 grain, basically a hollow point bullet with the plastic tip on it. Okay, goes 1,900 feet per second. Yep, and hits with 2,405 foot pounds of energy. So hello. Betty. Yeah. That's a thumper. That uh, is. You know, but the 300 grain is just a standard. You can just, go down the... Just standard. Just the standard. Yeah. I know we've... You know, we've, we've, we're playing with your 44 Magnum. We've done 180 grain, 44 Magnums, 200 grain, 240 grain, some 265s, and we shot some 300s out of your 44 Magnum pistol. Just see what it was like. You know, we loaded them up and shot them all specifically to, to the specs. And that is a certainly a short range gun at that point. Yes, you can uh, just about watch the bullet fly. But it's different when you're firing it out of an 18 inch barrel. 18 inch barrel with a lot more power. Now, and, uh, if you want to bring it down a little bit, you can go down to the 250 grain bullet. Yeah, 250 will do uh, 2,150 feet per second. I would think that would be. And this would be a really good round right here for hog hunting, for And deer that's hunting. exactly where this market is going towards for the yep. civilian population, for the hogs, because of the incredible just instant stopping power. The 250-grain bullet hits with 2,565 foot-pounds of energy. That's a, that's a heavy That's right definitely there. enough to flip an animal. Yep. And knock the bore right over. All right, now you want to go a little bit bigger. Go up to a 405-grain bullet. Well... You're you're losing speed on this one for some reason. I don't understand why. I know it's 405 grains, but um, it's it's a pretty tremendous drop in speed to 1600 feet per second. Right, but so, you're still very close in foot pounds of energy. You're at 2320, and that still exceeds like the 460 S- Smith and Wesson Smith and Wesson yeah. handguns and all that stuff, which are truly hand cannons. So uh, it's still a monster, but. Do you want to go even bigger? <laughs> is there a need? <laughs> that's that's the thing. Is oh. there a need? Maybe if you want to watch your bullet fly. Well, this is and this is an interesting concept, though. These guys. This goes back to the said, Vietnam. Yeah, this yeah this gets back to that 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 early production or or I guess scientifically specific sniper round. Uh, but this one would be, I would say. Uh, goes back to that low and slow yeah. or flat nose technology um, 
a thousand foot per second. That's a six hundred grain bullet going a thousand foot per second. That's still fast. It's, yeah, that's like, still faster, very fast. Faster than it, anybody I know can run. Well, so. yeah. Well, it's it's still it's three hundred feet faster than a thirty eight special goes. Yeah. But it hits with one thousand three hundred and thirty six foot pounds of energy. It's just a big bullet. Yeah, it is six hundred grain. That's that's just uh, I I don't I don't even know if I'd enjoy shooting that. You know. It uh, you know, there's such a variety of the bullets, and it, it, the cool thing is, with the right combinations, the 458 SOCOM can exactly copy the ballistics of the 4570 government. Yes. Out of a semi-automatic rifle. That's which is a nice setup, and having that whole setup in an AR-15 platform, that's uh, it's pretty interesting. And they're not, and well, we'll get. I know we'll get into it, but. Uh, you don't see a lot of these laying around gun shops. You don't. When guys buy these, they buy them and keep them, I think. They, you know, I've never seen yeah. one used. Exactly. I have never seen one used. So if you want one, you got to order one. Well, you got to order one. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. Uh, right. We're going to talk about the two different manufacturers that make these rifles. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's just a devastating round. And I think that's what kind of draws people to it is the fact that it's not an ordinary round. Very few places even have the ammo for it. Somewhat like the 450 Bushmaster. If you're going to reload it, you're going to take your time and you've got to find the proponents. They're not just going to sell them at any store. Uh, it's it, it needs... If it's a round you're looking at... You'll want to get into some... You'll want to really do, dot your I's and cross your T's, as we say, to make sure you can get ammunition. Yep. And that's, I explain that to a lot of young folks that call and ask us and, and email and say... You know, Mr. Gunsmith, I want to know, uh, I, I want to buy this gun. And they'll say, tell me what it is. And I'll say, the first thing that you answer your question with is, can I get ammunition for that gun? Yep. Is it readily available? And can I afford to shoot that gun? Um, recently, A perfect just, example is the 500 Smith & Wesson. Yeah. Yeah. Very expensive rounds to shoot. Not very comfortable to shoot. You certainly don't want to make it your first gun. Because you will not want to shoot much after that. Now, we had a friend recently, really wanted a Glock. I got to have a Glock. I want to have the most powerful Glock I can have. I said, well, get a 10 millimeter. Uh, he says, I think I'll take a 357 SIG. And I said, all right. Find somebody else to reload the ammunition for. Because <laughs> I don't reload that one. Um, but it's a bottleneck case. This is also a bottleneck case. It is. But it's a rifle case cartridge. And uh, not going to be hard to work with. And uh, we'll get into details on it. But I, for right now, we got to go to commercial break. Yeah, that's right. So. we got to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're talking about who makes the 458 SOCOM rifle for you. All right. Well, hang on tight. The gunsmiths will be back after this short commercial break. <laughs> 